Oh man, I've been trying to lose weight, which that sounds like a lie right off the bat, I know. <laughs> And trying to cut carbs, which is just a nice way of saying I've been slicing bagels. That's what that is. <laughs> that counts, right? That's, that's cutting carbs. They say a great way to lose weight is to eat naked in front of a mirror. <laughs> that does not work, by the way. <laughs> and consequently, I'm no longer welcome at Target. So. <laughs> That's a bad day of shopping for everybody right there. <laughs> no, still hungry. <laughs> Honey, go see if they got any more of that fiddle faddle. <laughs> I'm hungry. I do need to lose some weight, I do. One of the many signs I need to lose weight is I'm starting to snore. Uh, during the day while I'm awake, breathing just normally like you do. I don't know if anybody else has ever done this before, you know, just be talking to somebody, you're like, what are we have for dinner? <laughs> Kids done your homework yet? <laughs> couple of Big Macs, couple of fries. Anybody else want anything? <laughs> We're good. I don't know what's worse, that or choking on your own spit randomly for no apparent reason. That's the best, isn't it? Just having a conversation with somebody, you're like, anyway, your mom called. <laughs> she wants you to call. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I did that the other day in the car with my whole family in there. My wife is like, what in the world happened? <laughs> I think I swallowed and breathed at the same time. <laughs> She's like, here, have some water. I was like, did you hear what I just said? Are you trying to kill me? I have no idea what I'm doing. I really don't. I have no clue. I do apologize for my appearance, by the way. I've seen me, I know. <laughs> I got a haircut recently, obviously not a good one, I don't know. And I go in there and the lady's like, well, uh, what do you want? And I said, well, I'd like to look a little more like Andy. And apparently what she hears is I'd like to look like little orphan Annie. <laughs> I am stuck with this for a while, this is awesome. Some lady asked me the other day, she's like, do you perm your hair? Yeah. Yeah, that's just what this needed is a perm. <laughs> I remember looking in the mirror going, what would offset this enormous go hey, perm? That'll be good. <laughs> perm it up. Let's perm, perm, perm. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and bleach these eyebrows while I'm at it. I do not have anything to do this weekend. By the way, if you are born with these lovely white eyebrows and per my research, almost nobody else is. And this is just a sign that one day you'll be a mall Santa right there. That's what that is. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh my gosh. I never know what to wear when I do comedy. They always say you should wear something that makes you feel comfortable, but I figure you people didn't want to see me in a feather boa and a thong either, so. <laughs> Wear, wore this slimming outfit. <laughs> I thought about wearing my Halloween costume. I have the scariest Halloween costume. I go as Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> What's creepier than me showing up to your front door wearing only a red half shirt? <laughs> Singing some white zombie. <laughs> Pretty creepy, I would know. I've seen me naked. I oh, love it. I love Halloween, I do. I like going to a haunted house. Y'all ever go to a haunted house? That was about 12 of you. The rest of you already live in a haunted house? Is that what's going on here? I'm not gonna leave my haunted house to go to another one. I got my own problems at home. I love it, man. I love going to a haunted house. I do. I like watching all the shows on TV about haunted houses. And they got a bunch of those, too. You know, like American Horror Story and all those ghost hunting shows and Scooby-Doo. It's awesome. <laughs> the thing is, it's always something huge that's haunted. It's always like a haunted mansion or a haunted prison or a haunted Sam's Club or something like that. It's always something really big. And they never show a haunted trailer. 
And I don't know about you, but I refuse to believe that nobody has ever been killed in a trailer and now wanted to come back and haunt that thing. You know there are haunted trailers out there somewhere and the people who live in them are just too lazy to report it, you know? You know, there's some dude, he's just sitting in his trailer and all of a sudden he hears, boo! <laughs> what in the world was that? Go get me a beer. I'm gonna get my gun, that's what I'm gonna do. Turn the TV on, swamp people is on. I can't find the remote control, you know that! <laughs> Most ghosts are wearing like a Civil War outfit or a flowing gown or their IHOP uniform. And this ghost is wearing a white tank top and camo pants and his name is Earl. It's a scary ghost right there. Love watching TV, I do. I know it's hard to believe somebody as svelte as I am likes watching TV, but I do. I like watching all the shows about hoarding. I love the hoarder shows. Those people are sick. I love it. <laughs> Hoarding, when you think about it, it's just people have taken the idea of the junk drawer in the kitchen just a little too far, you know? <laughs> Honey, what do you want me to do with all this leftover soy sauce and ketchup packs from dinner tonight? Just put down the junk drawer for later. All right, well, what do you want me to do with that 270 pounds of mail we never seem to want to open? 18 flats of ramen noodles we bought six years ago and all that cat poop we never seem to throw away. <laughs> Just putting that in the dining room. We don't eat in there anymore anyway. It's okay. <laughs> By the way, you go to somebody's house, the first thing you smell is cat poop. Those people are hoarders. They really are. <laughs> and you know you've done that too. Somebody invites you over for dinner. Y'all show up and you're like, hey, thanks for having us. We've been looking forward to this all week. Just curious, what do we have for dinner today? Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, you got cats, don't you? I did not bring a bit of drill. Uh, oh, it's in my mouth. How do you do that? How do you turn a gas into a solid like that? That is gross. <coughs> oh, it's in my mouth. Oh, how many cats do you have? Like two, three, four hundred? Oh, that's about how many I smell. Oh, my eyes are watering. I think I'm gonna lose my eyesight. Let me ask you a question. You ever? You ever gone in there with like a Walmart bag on into that cat box, like scooped up all that poop, taking it out of that big green thing called a trash can? Have you ever done that? Do you have a cat box? Is it like a free range situation here? They just poop where they may? Is it like all up and down the stairs and all down the hallway? Is there one room they're doing it in? What's in that room over there? You never let us in that room in all the years of me coming here. What's in that room? Why is there a padlock on the door? Is that the cat crap room? Is that what's going on in here? Is there a bunch of cats crapping in there right now? Is there a horde of cats in there and they're just taking a crap? Is that what's going on in there? Is that why there's law locked up? Or are you just chucking bags of cat crap in there? Is that why it's all locked up? It's got bags and bags of cat crap in there. Are you just chucking bags of cat crap? Is that what's going on? Are you crapping in bags too? Is they got bags of your crap and their crap too? Is that what's going on? Is that why we don't get to go in there? room are there no bags at all is that just knee deep in your crap in their crap too this spaghetti tastes weird meatballs are not supposed to be long something's wrong with you i am calling it we're not friends anymore you need to get some help i'll see you on a and e or tlc or whatever you're weird man you're weird Love it, man. I love watching those hoarder shows. I do. I think everybody's watched at least one episode of Hoarders for the same reason, because it makes us all feel a lot better about our own house, you know? Like, you watch one episode, you don't feel that bad about that pile of clothes beside the bed. But it doesn't seem to stop my wife from complaining about it. She's like, when are you going to pick up that pile of clothes beside the bed? I'm like, I don't see any cat crap around here. <laughs> when are you going to stop hanging your bras on all the doorknobs around here? I'm thinking about having every doorknob in my house removed just to see where my wife would put a bra for once. <laughs> Nobody else has that problem at their house. <laughs> Nobody else ever sat down on the toilet and right as you close the door, a bra sweeps halfway in, halfway out. And now you're stuck in the toilet room and you gotta pull a wire out of the bra to try to jimmy yourself out of the bathroom. <laughs> Nobody, just me? All right. I got it. Love it, man. Love it. 
love watching TV. I even watch commercials. I love commercials. I do. There's one on the radio near where I live. It's this attorney. And she says, call our law firm if you have been hurt or killed in an accident. <laughs> I think she thought that went all the way through right there. I'm gonna call her tomorrow. They'll be like, yeah, I got killed yesterday. <laughs> trying to see how much money I can get before they bury me. <laughs> Weird. I love the radio, I do. I hear good stuff on the radio. I heard this awesome story. It's about this lady from Texas. She was born and raised in Texas. She went to go get her teeth fixed, and when she woke up out of the gas, she had a British accent, which I think is pretty funny that she went to go get her teeth fixed and woke up with a British accent. <laughs> one group of people that are rarely getting their teeth fixed. It was the British. But anyway, they interviewed the lady and she was like, everybody thinks I'm faking it, but I'm not. It's real. It's not my fault. I've never even left the country. All I did was go get my teeth fixed. They put me under. I woke up and I sound like this. And the dentist thinks it's not real. And my family think I'm faking it. And I'm not. It's real. It's not my fault. And here's the thing. It's a real thing. It's called foreign accent syndrome. And there's been a couple of hundred cases of it over the years. But every time it happens, it's always somebody waking up out of a coma or out of the gas. They've got like an Irish or a British or a Scottish accent. But you never hear some story about some dude over in England like falling and hitting his head. And then he wakes up and he's like, man, me and my mate Nigel. <laughs> We's walking our pet poodle, Beef Wellington. <laughs> Dang it, that dog didn't wander right in front of me. I fell and tripped and hit my head. <laughs> I woke up later and I sound like this. <laughs> I ain't never been to South Carolina before, man. This is dumb. <laughs> it matches these teeth, but this is stupid, man. <laughs> my fish and chips the other day and I ordered them scattered and smattered and covered and smothered and topped and chopped and I don't know what I was doing, man, but it's delicious. <laughs> I actually got a hankering to go to Talladega the other day. I don't know what a hankering is nor Talladega. <laughs> I'm about to lose my dang job. I'm a brain surgeon. <laughs> I love doing that, I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I also heard this other awesome story on the radio. It was about this, this dude, he was pulling out of a gas station. He didn't come to a stop when he was pulling out, so the cops pull him over. And uh, while they were pulling him over, they said, hey, do you mind if we search your car? He's like, I got nothing to hide, why not? So while they're searching his car, they found what they thought were traces of crystal meth. So he had to go to jail. And it wasn't until two days later that they discovered what they thought was crystal meth was actually the icing from a Krispy Kreme donut. <laughs> yeah, I heard that and the first thing I did was go vacuum the ever-loving crap out of my car. <laughs> and my wife's car. <laughs> and then I was like, you gotta be kidding me that the cops don't know donut icing when they see it. <laughs> Because I personally can pick Krispy Kreme donut icing out of a lineup, blindfold. <laughs> Every cop show I've ever seen, they're like licking their pinky, sticking it in a bag of powder, like, yeah, it's pure cocaine right there. I'm like, get me in a room with this stuff. I'll be like, yeah, that's Krispy Kreme donut icing. <laughs> Store number 43089. <laughs> that is Raleigh, North Carolina, right there on Person Street. <laughs> That was fried up at 7.38 p.m. and uh, promptly served at 7.41 p.m. The gentleman took a bite, dropped it on his black polo shirt, and then it hit the floor of his car. <laughs> I know way too much about Krispy Kreme donuts. I love it, man. Did y'all have a good Christmas? <laughs> I never know how to get into that next joke. Uh, <laughs> So I asked for something for Christmas this past year and it didn't work out. I, uh, I have a bunch of records, a bunch of vinyl records uh, that I have accumulated over the years. But somehow, many, many years ago, I lost my record player. I don't know what happened, it just up and disappeared. 
So this year for Christmas, I asked my wife, can I please have a turntable for Christmas? And I'm not kidding you, this is what she said to me. I don't know why you would want that. You never listen to your records. <laughs> Never mind, just never mind. I love my wife, she's a lovely lady. Uh, we've been married for almost 23 years. And uh, thanks, and uh, I think that math is right. I'm not good at math. And, uh, but uh, I, I can't tell you the secrets to being happily married, but I can tell you that you do need to find a partner that both of you are willing to utter this phrase to one another. Uh, I'm gonna need you to come look at something for me. <laughs> Come back here. It's not gonna lance itself. That is a true story, many times over. I actually had to go to the doctor recently. Here's something that I don't understand about going to the doctors. When they ask you to take off all your clothes, they leave the room, but then they have no problem coming back in once you're buck naked. It's like if you're naked, you're a patient, but if you're taking off your clothes, you're a stripper. <laughs> Either way, I have got to get a new optometrist because that <laughs> is not working out for me at all right there. I think I got my prescription right. I don't know why I had that off pole in this office. This is weird. <laughs> Y'all know what an optometrist is, right? <laughs> it's kind of crucial to the, to the eye doctor. Anyway. <laughs> Last time I went to the optometrist, I swear he asked me this question. He was like, have you noticed any floaters recently? I was like, no. I usually just flush and walk away. I don't know what this has to do with the eye exam or why I'm naked, but you're weird, man. I'll keep an eye out for you. Most of this is baby fat, to be honest. I probably should stop eating fat babies, but they're delicious, they really are. Dip them in hot butter, they are awesome. One day I'll be able to tell that joke without giggling at it, I don't know. Speaking of diabetes, they have come out. They've come out with two diabetic medications made from the saliva of a Gila monster. That's a lizard, absolutely true. And you know what this means? Rednecks have infiltrated the pharmaceutical industry. And you can see how this happened. A couple of fellas are sitting around on the porch, and one of them turns the other. He's like, Eustace! What? What? What are we gonna do about mama's diabetes? <laughs> Man, I don't know, Zeke, but I'd, I'd suck spit out of a lizard if I thought it'd help. <laughs> and the rest is history. <laughs> I loaded up the truck and moved to Beverly. <laughs> I think I lost a contact just then. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm not big on pranks, but I do like to have fun every now and then. I had a buddy text me one day and he was like, hey, you ever gonna call me back? Which I thought was kind of a stupid text because clearly I'd forgotten to call him. So, uh, so I called him and I got his voicemail, which was stupid. I just called him right then. So this is the voicemail I left on my friend Jim's phone uh, when he didn't answer. I was like, hey, Jim, this is Andy. I don't know what happened to you. I guess you died. And then I just hung up. <laughs> 10 minutes later, Jim calls me and he was like, dude, 
please tell me you were talking weird. <laughs> because if not, something's wrong with my phone. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Must be something wrong with the speed on your phone. You should push the up button on your volume. Which I think he did push the up button on his volume, and then I was like, How about now? Is it better now? Can you tell me now? How about now? So Jim and I haven't talked in years. That is weird. I am the, <coughs> excuse me, I am the proud father of a couple little girls. And uh, yeah. I love them, but they are both for sale on eBay or, uh, or Etsy. I think it's Etsy. I help make them, so I think it's, uh, yeah. Anyway. It's kind of a buy one, get one free slash I pay you deal. They are, uh, they're terrible children. They really are. And I have a 17-year-old girl, and this is what she looks like. She's just skinny as a, well, she's not black, but she's skinny as a rail right there. She really is. All right. I remember when she was a little baby and uh, we took her to the pediatrician and the doctor was like, well, maybe when she gets older, she'll be petite. And I was like, ha, <laughs> said, why are you laughing? I was like, yeah, petite does not run in our family. <laughs> Technically, nobody runs in our family. <laughs> I got another little girl. She is 11 and she is definitely for sale because uh, she, uh, she's going to be a serial killer when she gets older. <laughs> She's done some stuff in the last few years that's gonna land us on an episode of Cops. That's what's gonna happen. For example, it snowed uh, where we lived a couple of years ago and uh, she decided she needed three cups of snow in her bedroom. And what better way to get that than to climb out of the window of our two-story house and get it off the roof, right? That's how you do it, right, sir? Of course. So the next day when I'm putting locks on the window from the outside of the house, because if I put them on the inside, she'd just pick them. I know this because I did that, and she did that. <laughs> so while I'm out there putting the locks on, I find a bunch of change in the snow and in the gutter. So I go to her, I'm like, hey, why did I find $4.37 in change in the gutter? She just looks at me and goes, because that's where I put it. <laughs> Whatever, Creepy McGee. <laughs> she turned the power off at two of our neighbor's houses from the outside of their house. I don't even know how to do that at my own house. <laughs> She turned our hot water heater off one day. It's in our garage and there's a setting on there that says vacation. And I think she thought we would all go on vacation. And all we did was take really cold showers. One day, I, my favorite thing is I found a pair of scissors broken in half, shoved under the couch like a pair of shivs waiting to be used later on somebody in the yard. Unbelievable. I'm thinking about getting revenge on my kids. I'm gonna start doing some of the same stuff to them that they did to me, see how they like it, you know? Like go in their room at three o'clock in the morning and just go, hey, 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 And right when they wake up, I'm just gonna go, can you come tuck me back in? I had a nightmare, I had these two horrible children. Go out to a restaurant, wait till they bring the food, and right when they put it on the table, I'm just gonna go, no! I didn't want Pasquetti, no! Fall on the floor, lose a shoe, hit somebody at the next booth, climb over a couple of other booths, go in the bathroom and lick the stall wall. That's a true story. Yeah. I'm gonna start doing this though. I'm just gonna start yelling this from the bathroom in my house. Somebody needs to wipe me! <laughs> See how they like it. They do it right, they better show with a plunger because that's what I have to do every time. They are terrible people. Speaking of stupid pet owners, I uh, had a... <laughs> And I've had my dog to the vet recently, which I hate doing because they're always trying to get you to buy stuff your dog doesn't need. They're like, we think your dog's teeth need cleaning. <laughs> really? How much is that going to run me? $400. <laughs> How much for a new dog? <laughs> I love my dog and all, but I know the moment I get her teeth clean, she's going to go home and eat her own turds in the backyard. <laughs> That's a terrible investment right there. <laughs> 
I took my dog to the vet and they gave me these pills and they were like, now look, when you get her home and after you've given her the pills, make sure you take her out in the backyard and as soon as she poops, make sure you pick it up real quick because they tend to want to eat this poop in particular because it tastes like vanilla. And I was like, how do you know it tastes like vanilla? Do you know my optometrist? You're weird, man. All right, last one and I'll leave you people be. This is absolutely true. I swear, I, one time I saw a sign in a neighborhood near my house and I swear it said, Lost Tortoise, 35 pounds. Name is Gertie, very sweet. How long do you have to not be watching your tortoise to lose it? Even after two weeks, she's just over there. My favorite part is they give you the tortoise's name. How exactly are you locating a lost tortoise? Are you out in the backyard going, here, Gertie, 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 Gertie. Like she's gonna come scampering out of the woods? Listen, I'm Andy Force, and you look awesome. Thank you so much. What's up, Joy Bunk? Woo! All right, you guys get a good looking crowd tonight. My name is Vinny Montez. Uh, I hail from Denver, Colorado. I'm uh, from a non traditional Mexican family. There's only four of us in my family. <laughs> My 69-year-old mother is the ringleader of the family, five foot tall, less than 100 pounds, just pure lightning in her veins, all right? When I was a kid, I could come home with a compound fracture. She'd immediately revert back to the last time I was mouthing off. See me call, and God punishes without a belt. <laughs> Where's the love? Not here, mijito, not here. And mijito means my son, my little son, although I'm not little anymore. Uh, <laughs> oh man, I'll tell you what, uh, my mom, uh, she's always telling me weird things. She's like, Nicole, you're getting a little bit too big. You know, you need to slow down, not be eating so much. I'm like, all right. But then the next thing she tells me, she's like, pero come over tonight, we're gonna have enchiladas, tostadas, and tamales. <laughs> That's gonna work on the midsection there, mother. <laughs> Let's get this out of the way right now. Uh, I'm actually, I'm a cop currently right now. I've been a cop for the last 21 years. It's a lot of fun. Uh, thing about it is though, when I became a cop, uh, went to the academy in 97, became a cop in 98, uh, I didn't sign up to deal with bears, all right? That's all I'm saying right now. This lady called 911, she's like, there's a bear in my kitchen. There's a bear in my kitchen. I'm like, that's my problem? <laughs> I mean, if it was a brown bear, right, I could do something about it. I'd be like, what vato, que paso, que rollo? <laughs> <laughs> they got any enchiladas in the freezer or what, eh? <laughs> but that wasn't the situation, right? So my partner comes out of the station, right? The night that we got this call, I was paired up with one of the SWAT guys, all right? I'm not a SWAT guy, but he was. And he comes out of the station, he's all, yeah, bro, we're gonna go get the bear, bro. <laughs> and you know, he's that one cop that just has that swagger, yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> So Captain America and I are going to get this bear. <laughs> and we're going up the canyon and he's in the passenger seat. I'm driving lights and sirens. We're going to this call. This lady's calling 911. They're updating us on dispatch. And he's just in the passenger seat. <laughs> so we get to the call. And before I could stop him, he gets out of the car. He grabs the shotgun. He's all shh, shh. 
<laughs> I'm all, dude, you cannot shoot a bear with a shotgun, bro. The Subaru drivers will not put up with that, bro. <laughs> Any Subaru drivers in here tonight? Shut up, nobody cares, nobody cares. <laughs> So before I could stop Captain America, he runs into the house. I wish I was making this part up, but this is completely true. I'm standing outside. This is the very next thing that I hear. Oh, uh, here, bear, 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 bear. <laughs> hey, bear, where you at, bear? <laughs> this dude is in there like Elmer Fudd. <laughs> I'm gonna find a bear. I'm gonna find a bear. <laughs> I just want to point out at this point in time in the show, I was still outside the house, okay? Because I know better. My mom raised a smart kid. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, what's the SWAT guy in there doing? Like searching the house all tactically and everything? He's gonna round the corner in the kitchen, come face to face with a bear and be like, Hey, boo-boo, got a picnic basket. <laughs> the bear and I had a lot in common. He came in the house, he obtained the food, and left said house. <laughs> I want to let you know, super drivers, it was okay. Nobody got hurt during the scenario. Just want to make sure you're not going to come up here and yell at me. But speaking about Subaru drivers... <laughs> The only reason I give them a hard time is because every time I got to go somewhere, there they are blocking the fast lane. <laughs> Where I work, we had a riotous situation involving a bunch of Subaru drivers. <laughs> They're like, I say protest, protest. Protest, protest. <laughs> And the bosses were like, you know what? We're going to call out the riot team. We're going to shoot them with a bunch of pepper balls. <laughs> and I'm like, why? That's a good waste of pepper balls. <laughs> if you're going to shoot them with anything, shoot them with gluten balls. Be like... But then one of the Subi Nation would come out, wait a minute, I'm the leader of the Subi Nation. <laughs> it's the assistant leader right here. <laughs> I got the antidote for the gluten, don't worry. I'm prepared. Just a little essential peppermint oil underneath the eyes. <laughs> See those reflexes? <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Uh, talk a little bit about my mom. I told you about her. Uh, <clears throat> my mother, like I said, five foot tall, less than 100 pounds, just pure lightning in her veins. But she's a lady that wants to know what's going on out there on the streets. She's like, Mikha, I'm going on a ride along with you. <laughs> really? <laughs> I need to know what's going on. I don't trust the news. I want to see for myself. But every time she rides along with me, she gets way too involved in the situation. <laughs> the last time she rode along, we got called to a park, a skate park, where a bunch of kids were being pushed around by a drunk guy. So we get there, and I go up to the dude, and I'm like, hey, let's go to detox, bro. No ticket, no jail. What do you say? He says, let me tell you something, fat boy. I'll kick your butt, fat boy. My mother hears this from my patrol car. <laughs> she grabs the PA. Mijo, you need some backup? <laughs> then this dude starts it on my mom. He's like, who's that old Mexican hag in the car? <laughs> Don't worry, you don't know my mom without missing a beat. 
Mijo, give me the green light. I'll cut him with my straight razor. <laughs> I'm working up here. Big guy like me, I'm 205 pounds is what I am. <laughs> that was a little too much, sir. I could take it though, I could take it. <laughs> It's one of the Subaru drivers. I know it. <laughs> Forrester. <laughs> Tooley rack on top. <laughs> I learned a hard lesson recently. Fellas, pay attention. One more time, fellas, take note. <laughs> So it's the middle of the night. Let me paint you the picture. It's three o'clock in the morning. I get up to go to the bathroom. I handle my business. I don't turn on a single light because I am a professional. <laughs> I'm on my way back to bed and from downstairs, I hear crash kaboom. So I stop and I listen because there is criminal activity afoot. <laughs> And from the bed, I hear, babe, babe, did you hear that? Did you hear that? To which I replied, shh. <laughs> and about 10 seconds of silence went by. And then I heard, did you just shush me? <laughs> You don't stress me in this house. But I couldn't see her face, but in my mind, that's what she was doing. And I'm like, you wanna have an argument right now? I'm thinking I might have to kill somebody. So I got tired of it. I walked down the stairs. I was looking for the burglar. Because if I would have found him, I'd have been like, sir, upstairs, first door on your left. <laughs> Things haven't been the same since. Uh, <laughs> my goodness, you guys are an awesome crowd. Uh, I don't take myself too seriously because I don't think you can. I got into comedy because uh, I wanted to protect my mental health. We see a lot of things and I can share and twist them with you. Uh, and it's important to me to keep that mental health strong. And I don't want to want to be one of those jaded cops at the end of a 20 or 30 year career. But the best example of this is I love it when people are quick-witted. We had a fight at one of the colleges. I showed up, I get out of my car, there's these two young guys standing on the corner. So I said, hey bro, did you guys see the fight over here? Young guy's like, dude, totally saw what happened, bro. Totally saw what happened, okay? <laughs> I'm like, okay, you overachiever. <laughs> Can you write me a written statement? He's like, no, I can send you a text message. <laughs> so I don't want to get into it with this kid. So I give him my phone number and 20 minutes later, he sends me a text message. Hey, Popo. <laughs> I ain't no rap, Popo. <laughs> That's not the bad part. On busy nights when I'm working, this kid still sends me random text messages. <laughs> hey, Popo. <laughs> We're about to leave the bar. Where are you guys at right now? Thirty minutes later, hey Popo, we made it home, but we're out of food. Can you make a pizza run? <laughs> you can't get mad at that. You cannot get mad at that. That 
guy is genius. <laughs> dude, when I see that guy again, I'm gonna be like, high five, bro, that is awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. You're going to jail for sure with that. <laughs> All I'm saying, for sure, he's a Subaru driver. That's it. <laughs> uh, you know, the, one of the ladies I work with, she's constantly, you know, as a cop, uh, I am a big guy. I like to lift weights. Uh, if you ever see me running after somebody and you happen to see that site, hit them with your car because they're wanted for a serious crime. <laughs> I mean, this is not foot pursuit material is what I'm saying, right? I mean, downhill, we got a good shot at it, right? Stopping will be a problem. <laughs> oh, you guys are good. I'm gonna switch it up here because you guys like that. Well, I'm gonna, this is what we're gonna do. I didn't know I was gonna talk about this, but we're gonna talk about it. Millennial cops are entering the police force. <laughs> I'm gonna say it one more time. Millennial cops are entering the police force. We were reading reports one night. It was a DUI report. And it was nothing but emojis. So like, what is this? The younger officer's like, what are you talking about, Sarge? Drunk emoji, drunk emoji, get to the jail, poop emoji, poop emoji. <laughs> well, I guess it's okay then. <laughs> the funny thing is a lot of these guys and gals, they don't wanna drive normal cop cars, you know, like Interceptors and Tahoes. They wanna drive Priuses. <laughs> but Priuses that are only battery powered. Can you imagine somebody calling 911? There's been a terrible accident. Send help. I can't, Sarge. I haven't recharged yet. I haven't recharged yet. <laughs> they try to do a roadblock. People just like kick the car out of the way. <laughs> My favorite time of the year to be a cop is Halloween time because you see the craziest stuff. And uh, you know, it, it comes at you, you gotta deal with it. This last Halloween, I'm driving down the boulevard and there's a lady on the corner dressed up like a white cotton ball. <laughs> so I was like, what? Rip, 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 rip. <laughs> what are you? She's like, me? <laughs> I was like, yeah, you, what are you? She's like, I am a loofah. <laughs> Are you a dirty officer? <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> like good and I'm like you know I realize with all the stuff going on with cops around the country that we got to be proactive right in building rapports with citizens you know what I'm saying so I'm like I got you sister I grabbed the strobe lights I turned them all on I grabbed my PA and I'm all she's like oh my goodness I didn't know we were gonna make money I got you that's the scariest thing you've ever seen I sure hope he knows where the end of the stage is. <laughs> Timber! We got a patron down in the front row, patron down. <laughs> Mexican down too, Mexican. <laughs> so I'm into it, right? I got this side of the street. <laughs> this side of the street. <laughs> Not paying attention. There comes my supervisor driving around the corner. <laughs> I know, right? I didn't know what to do. So I tased the loofah.
twice. <laughs> That's a little too much clapping back there, sir. He should have done it third time, third time. <laughs> Tomorrow is 420. <clears throat> And I am a cop, right? And where I work, it's actually legal. I'm not a proponent of it. I don't believe in it, but I have to work with it, right? <clears throat> Last 420, I decided to work the event because it was overtime and they needed cops to do it. So I showed up and I was like, how hard could it be to work a 420 event, right? Bunch of stoners hang out, should be pretty chill. So I get there and it's three o'clock in the afternoon and there's 10,000 people on the field and it is just a cloud of smoke. <laughs> what I didn't realize is you could get a contact high. <laughs> More importantly, I didn't realize is if I get a contact high, I become Mexican Tickle Me Elmo. <laughs> Dispatch start calling me on the radio. Vinny, can we get a status you in there? <laughs> Dispatch, go ahead. <laughs> Anybody want to take me to Taco Bell right now? <laughs> Everybody's looking right. Is he laughing? Is he laughing? <laughs> I'm probably the only person that could get away with that joke here. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, one of the ladies I work with, she challenged me. She's like, you know what? If you're serious about getting in shape, you should try yoga. And I was like, yoga? You can't challenge me to do something and think I won't do it, all right? So I, I did it. I went to the yoga studio. I signed up. Problem was... I accidentally signed up for hot power yoga. And if you don't know what hot power yoga is, let me tell you. They put you in there for 90 minutes in a floor with just wood floor and stuff like that. And then they turn the thermostat all the way up. You cannot challenge me to do anything in this world without me preparing. So on my way to hot power yoga, I stopped at Taco Bell and got my usual. <laughs> I love that guy back there. He's my new friend. So I'm in this class and we're about 45 minutes into it, right? And I'm in downward dog at this point. And you think I'm sweating now. Lake Havasu was forming underneath me. And the funny part about it, there was a really cute girl next to me and Lake Havasu was getting closer and closer. Misty, the instructor, was like shaking her head throughout the class. I was already mad because they don't make yoga mats for fat people like me, okay? There was no cup holder for my Diet Pepsi. About an hour into the class, I hear this. <laughs> Misty focuses on me at this point in time. <laughs> they put me in the final position in the final pose, which is child's pose. <laughs> Huddled up in a little ball. <laughs> Y'all know what a Jake break sounds like when it lets loose? <laughs> Misty's hair blew back like it was Hiroshima. <laughs> People were running for the room. <laughs> Point is, I'm no longer welcome at hot power yoga. <laughs> oh, goodness, that's awesome. 
I got any Latinos in here? My raza? Aquí estoy. Orale. Two people. All right. Mm. We always got backup. Quick shout out to the kitchen. Que All right. Tú sabes. Orale. Now, don't tighten up on me here, okay? We're having a good time, all right? I love my Mexican people, all right? I love my raza, but we make it way too easy to get pulled over. <laughs> One of my cousins passed me, and I was like, what? <laughs> he leaned out the window. He's like, yeah, what are you pulling me over for? I'm like, you're not familiar with MPC, Mexican Probable Cause? <laughs> Like, what is that, Holmes? If like, I'm like, if your name appears in your car in any location in old English font, <laughs> that is Mexican probable cause. If instead of a throbbing bass, I hear a throbbing accordion, <laughs> MPC, baby. And last but not least, if the tires and the rims cost more than the actual vehicle you were driving. <laughs> that is Mexican probable cause. <laughs> oh, I love that joke. <laughs> because it's true. I love my people, but it's true. I just want to, like, before I retire as a cop, like, I hope to get 30 years in, so I got, like, nine more. But I just like to... I just like to take my car out one night, <clears throat> roll the seat back just a little bit so they couldn't see who was in the car. <laughs> and just go screaming down the road, right? And just be like, they'd be like, ah, now an emergency. Yes, one of your cars is missing, apparently been stolen down the road. Cause I just have Mer Mexican music blaring out of it. <laughs> Soy la policía. <laughs> All right, I want to do this one thing with you guys because it made me feel so good recently. Um, I'm part of this group called HTB Humanize the Badge. There's a bunch of officers around the country uh, that try to humanize the badge, and you know, people know that not all cops are bad out there. And uh, <clears throat> we went to Las Vegas not long ago to speak with some of the kids in the jail. And uh, while we were there, I learned about this awesome place. You may not, maybe you know about it. It's called the Shake Shack. Yeah. And they're like, they got a peanut butter chocolate shake. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and they were talking to me, so we're going. I'm like, when I, obviously, you know, I eat well. And what I'm saying is, <laughs> I was so excited. We're driving to this place, and I just got it in my head. You could tell I'm really energetic. So I start singing to myself, where are we going, Shake Shack? Who's going? We're going. Where are we going, Shake Shack? <laughs> so the next thing you know is we're driving down the strip in Las Vegas. We got the cars next to us doing, where are we going, Shake Shack? Who's <laughs> So I want to do it with you. Can I do that with you guys? So I say, where are we going? You say, Shake Shack. When I say, who's going? You say, we're going. And I'm gonna say, where are we going? You say, Shake Shack. Can y'all handle that? Yeah. All right, here we go. I want you loud and proud. Where are we going? Shake Shack. Who's going? We're going. Where are we going? Shake Shack. Who's paying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get out of here pretty quick, but l let me tell you this. Where I work, I, I actually, I am from Denver, Colorado, but I grew up, uh, and I am from originally Boulder, Colorado, which is right up against the mountains, right? Mmm. <laughs> Any other buffs in here tonight? See you buffs? Let's go buffs. All right. Enough. Uh, <laughs> where I work, people do a lot of crazy stuff like climb mountains, and then they don't know how to get back down. <laughs> so then I get there, I'm like, what do you want me to do? Does it actually look like I've been up a mountain? <laughs> they start yelling at me. I'm like, no, sir, you cannot jump down on top of me. <laughs> What? No, I'm not actually inflatable. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, sir. Is that your Subaru in the parking lot? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Vinny Montez. God bless you.
you guys.